everybody, this is Capitalist from Join Dota. I have with me Zai from Evil Geniuses. We're here at DreamHack. You guys just got finished with your match up against Virtus Pro Polar. Uh, you guys actually took it really easily. 2-0. Uh, yeah. It seemed like quite the stomp. That was rather convincingly. Uh, I don't think we had that many issues with the games. Um, so I actually wanted to go, since I just had FNG here for an interview, I actually wanted to go over the series just a little bit. Um, he especially felt like, and, and I felt like this just watching from the beginning, I felt like PPD's draft was um, really well put together in game number two. It seemed like you guys had completely had them countered. Did you feel the same way? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I think going into the series we were very confident with what they play and what we can play against it. So. It really wasn't that difficult for us. And um, actually, w game one, I remember now, I have a question about game one. Um, I'm not sure if you'll know, but the draft you guys had, it actually seemed like you were setting up for a Drow Ranger. You guys had a Visage third pick, and instead of going for the Drow Ranger, you went for the Weaver. Now, is there a specific reason you didn't go for the Drow Ranger? Was the lineup that VPP had a little bit too dangerous for a Drow? Uh, yeah, I don't think that was a good draw game. Um, and even though this is pairs up very nicely with draw, um, mm -hmm. there's always like and how that pairs up with the birds. Right. And I think there's so many ways you can utilize visage. Uh, you know, you can use these birds to split push even though you don't have the drawer. You can. It's really good against heroes like Brewmaster, where you usually you're usually able to like instantly kill the fire panda if you mm -hmm. like medallion and uh, focus your birds on it and. It was it was just a good pick. It also has a very good landing phase along with Hal. Uh, like I don't know if you watched, but in the bottom lane we would uh, use the grip shell on on the panda. Right. We use Hal, and then I get like six auto attacks off with the Hal damage. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a very good hero. So um, can you actually do you remember the draft from VPP and what exactly what heroes that you felt like this isn't a good Drow Ranger game? They had a lot of like heroes that jump draw I think right they had the brewmaster already in yeah, the uh, ember spirits right all the titan is pretty good against draw because uh, draw has so much armor coming from her agility mm -hmm. and that's all negated by the etr right uh, what else did they have they had the a lich and they had a what else did they have I think it was mainly the first three that I think that was those those first three pickups yeah. that they had and it seemed like yeah yeah you kind of pointed out they're all kind of dangerous the mobility and then the armor I think was yeah. a really good point you I brought think up if like, say Cloud9 would be in that game instead of us, and they had those three picks, they probably would have gone for the draw. But I don't think we're as comfortable with the hero as they are. And, I don't know, we just felt like we could do something else with the, with the Visage, I think. Okay, so so talk about that, actually. the You you said you don't feel as comfortable with the Draw Ranger. Th that's basically a draft that you kind of, you know, guys kind of took from Cloud9 and kind of yeah. made it your own. I, just, I don't want to say we're not comfortable with the hero, but I don't think we're as comfortable with the right. hero. Uh, I think C9 can pick Draw into anything and feel good about it, and they feel like they can be anything with it. Uh, but we're not as confident, confident with the hero. So I think in some scenarios where they would have picked Draw, we choose to go for something else. Okay, so something I really want to get into here, whenever I talk about Evil Geniuses and Cloud9 to some of the other players, some of the other teams here, um, I kind of ask them about strength and weaknesses, right? And one thing that has always come up about Cloud9 specifically is that they always bring up Aoi 2000 and say that his him performing the four role and making that transition into like a, a, a core position, even potentially carrying the whole entire game, is a huge strength for them. And they said it's a huge strength for you guys as well, when, when you're taking over the four position. Can you talk about maybe a little bit of the idea behind that four position um, and making that transition? Um, I'm not really sure like where it came from, but all of a sudden I was getting so much from and supports, I guess. I, yeah. think, I think it's just a, like a side effect of how we play. Uh, of how we play Dota or how we prefer to play Dota. Uh, what what is what is that? Th how do you prefer to play Dota exactly? <laughs> well, it's it's kind of hard to to define, but <laughs> right. basically, a side effect of it is that there's always a lot of space open for me. Uh, I can always be like on the opposite side of the map, just hit neutrals, hit creeps, uh, without really putting myself into danger. And probably it came from our tour being so like our tour, <laughs> <laughs> and basically just attracting like enemies to him, I guess. Uh huh. Uh, and that you just frees up space for everyone else. Uh, he just attracts haters everywhere he goes, right? I mean, something like that. But there's also, I mean, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at finding farm, even though I'm not supposed to find farm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that, I think that's like one of the, the greatest strengths a support player can have. Uh, like if you look at players like me and Aoi, uh, and FY sometimes as well, uh, we're just, we always seem to get, you know, these items on the heroes that are not supposed to get items. Um, 
but you know it, it adds up. So in the end game, we had four cores while the enemy team has three cores, and mm -hmm. that usually works on after. Yeah, that's that's something that all three of you, you all have three history of being able to in the past play the core position. Fy known for being an amazing mid laner, uh, uh, of course. Um, for example, well, this is actually the opposite. But Eternal Envy making the transition from playing a support into a carry position. But of course, Aoi used to play the carry for Dignitas. And back in Han, you used to play a uh, core position, correct? I played offlane uh, right. throughout my Han career. And then when I started playing Dota, I also played offlane. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where me finding farm com comes from. Right. Uh, usually I would play these heroes that you know kind of get sacked. Especially in Han, that was how you played offlane primarily. Mm -hmm. You would have, have a hero that usually went against a trialian. Right. And then you're not really supposed to find farm. but you know, eventually find farm anyway and become mm -hmm. a factor. And I think that's probably where it comes from. Um, I would say my hunters is, you know, what made me into what I am today, <laughs> I guess. So you're basically saying that being Han trash has actually made you one of the best Dota players and uh, one, one of the best Dota teams out there. Probably. I think yeah. a lot of the stuff we used in Han and how, how mm -hmm. you play the game, even though the game was so different, uh, we can use that in our favor, both me and Peter. Um, right. So, and, you know, there's... Also, a ton of other home players and mm -hmm. other teams. So, I definitely think that's that's why. Yeah. Okay, so uh, since that's a big strength for you, uh, both Evil Geniuses as well as Cloud9, uh, can you maybe talk about some weakness that you see in perhaps both of your teams? Because I feel like you guys have a very similar play style, uh, rather similar draft. It seems like you guys are just always a bit better in the clutch. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty good at staying calm inside of the game. We don't really have that many emotional players mm -hmm. that, you know, get heated during games and stuff. Uh, as far as weaknesses goes for us, um, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say we don't have that many weaknesses, but right. I guess to mention one of them, I don't think we're that good in the early stages of a tournament, usually. Right. Uh, like day one, just stay day one EG, uh, we usually like lose a lot of matches. Yeah. And it takes some time for us to adapt to the surroundings and how teams play, because obviously every tournament is different mm -hmm. as far as how teams play. Uh, TI was push heavy. Right. Well, Starletter was kind of different. You abused agents and stuff. And this this tournament has been a ton of Stark and Storm and stuff. So I think we're pretty good at adapting to how the tournament is played and then forming like our own strategies, I guess, around mm -hmm. it and playing onward. It just takes you guys a little bit that first little yeah. start, and and it also probably doesn't help. You guys are always kind of the team that it has the targets on your back, being uh, especially for this team, the favorited team. Yeah. And like if you look back at the the previous stream league, we went out in the first round, right? Uh, yep. Which I think might have had to do with us not, you know, being able to prepare for the tournament and not being able to adapt as well because it was single elimination, right? Uh, so that kind of format usually hurts us quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, but usually there's it's not that common in tournaments, and we usually kick back. Okay, that that's um that's something that sounds like it's maybe a little bit hard to work on. Um, just being able to adapt faster to it. That, that seems like more like a really big picture thing. Is there something maybe specifically that you or the team is trying to work on I improving uh, one area of the game? Uh, I think being able to adapt is the, is the biggest strength the team could have, okay. uh, especially for a tournament like TI, which right. eventually everything adds up to. Right. Uh, being able to adapt is what wins you games, I think. Uh, we failed to adapt last TI, I would say. Uh, Newbie and Vichy were pushing... Uh, so heavily, and we weren't able to find what worked against it, mm -hmm. which is eventually why we lost. Do you feel like after the tournament that you maybe solved that puzzle a little bit, or? I mean, pushing was definitely broken in the patch, and right. the Chinese were very good at abusing it, mm -hmm. um, but there were definitely things we could have done about it that we didn't do at that time. Uh, so I think, I mean, it, it, we're constantly trying to improve um, our you know, adapting skills, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, I if we get it to work as we want to, we'll yeah. be able to adapt to, every, to um, anything a team throws against us, but okay. maybe it won't work that way. We'll see. I'm kind of interested. Uh, uh, do you have anything specific that you said there were some, some things that maybe you could have done? Do you have anything specific that you can name that maybe would have been better up against those Chinese push rats? I think we were very set on having like a, uh, our play style. Uh -huh. We didn't play that many different things. It was only until like after Terra that we actually started pushing ourselves. Right. Before that, we would like pick three core lineups and have me in like an Enigma or Sand King and mm -hmm. just kind of go from there. And it really didn't work out against the push. But we didn't really feel like we had anything else in store that we were that confident with. Uh, so I think that's primarily why we couldn't do it. We didn't have that many strategies, you know, against the push. 
And that's probably why um, I believe sometime, I think it was PPD, uh, maybe it was Artur, who said that we really want to this year be working on being able to, I, I think they actually said moving players around into different right, roles, right. but in general it just comes down to versatility and, and being able to yeah, change I up. Think right. On a perfect Dota team, everyone can play every single role. Everyone right. can play every single hero. Obviously, that's maybe not possible in such a short span of time to mm. perfect all the all the roles. But right. I think it hasn't been that common lately, but I've been. I, I can move to core if I want to. Okay. We can move to the support. We can swap our lanes as we want to, um, which is definitely a, a good thing in Dota teams. I don't think every Dota team can do it, and that could that could be a weakness. Like if you look at Cloud Nine, you always know who's playing what. Right. If you look at our team or maybe Team Secret or Beach, you maybe you don't know that. So yeah. That's, you know, it adds up to small little things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so is there, um, I if you were going to start playing maybe a little bit more core roles, is there a certain position or is it certain heroes that it comes down it's to? It's probably certain heroes. I yeah. Think. It's, a, it's a player preference. Mm -hmm. Some people, like, say Universe doesn't want to play Clockwork. I can step up and say okay. I can play Clockwork. And yeah. then he goes jungle on some hero that he plays well. Mm-hmm. Although there's not that many heroes that <laughs> he plays that I wouldn't play. Right. And, you know, vice versa. But, yeah, it's a, it's a possibility. Okay. So, um, going into, let's get back to this tournament. So, we just saw you guys take down VPP. We ha right now have a match going on between Cloud9 and Virtus Pro. Um, do you have any predictions for that match? Um, I, I would say that Cloud9 is going to win. Uh, right. But I wouldn't be surprised if VP takes a week one game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is um, how do you feel about the other three teams that you could be conceivably seeing in the winners bracket finals or even the finals itself? Uh, who do you feel like Cloud Nine is is definitely the top contender here? And yeah, that's right. They're, they're definitely the team to beat here. Right. Um, after losing to them two zero in the phase two. Yep. We were feeling kind of you know, I don't know. Yeah. Sad down, uh, and so we definitely want our revenge on Cloud Nine. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, I think. I mean, the VP teams, as I said, they're not the strongest teams here, but they're right. definitely capable of taking games of both us and Call 9. Hey, the, well, actually, when I had um, the interview with Peter yesterday, I asked him about the bottom four teams, and he kind of nailed it. He said that Virtus Pro Polar um, would be the team that made it out on top, and he said that they seem to be really strong. And, and talking to FNG, I felt like they were that they really seem to be clicking, that other, they all seem to be really hardworking. Uh, and that's something, when FNG tells you, you know, I'm, I may not be the one playing the most games on my team, I may not be the one working the hardest, like that, that kind of says a lot, I think. Uh, do you agree that Virtus Pro Polar may be like that next big up and coming team, even uh, if they're so, yeah. broken apart right now? Right. Yeah, I mean, you always feel kind of down after a loss, but I right. think they're definitely one of the strongest teams in the, in the Western scene right now. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Navi play in such a long time, but if Navi wasn't there, I would definitely say they're the, the best Russian team or the CIS team, mm -hmm. and probably one in like top four in, in Europe. So okay. yeah, they're looking good. Okay, so um, we talked about this tournament. I just want to get over one thing, and that's Team Secret. Um, Peter mentioned this, that um, Cloud9 actually thought that Team Secret was the top Western team, and that um, that he said they're easily like second, maybe third. Um, depending on how Cloud9 are doing in any given day. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Team Secret? Do you see any like big strengths or big weaknesses? Um, I'm not sure what makes them so strong, but they're definitely one of the strongest Western teams. If we weren't, you know, if I, I can't say that we're second place. I have to say that we're the best team. I right, mean, of course. you got to have confidence. Uh, so they're definitely the second best team. Um, I mean, there's they have like five really s like super good players. Yeah. Uh, it's an all-star team for sure. Yeah, also have seasoned players. I mean, they basically know the game in and out, um, and they're also—I don't know—they're they're very innovative. I think. Yeah. Uh, they know what they want to do. They can bring out tons of different stuff. Like we saw, when we played them as draw letter. They busted out the elder time support that actually yep. crushed us, uh, which has now become a you know a complete flavor of the month. Everybody's right, doing right. it. And and so, they're the kind of team that you have to adapt to. Like right. They're the kind of team that brings the new stuff to the tournaments. And they're the kind of team that <laughs> if if you don't you know if you don't learn how they play, then they're just gonna crush you. And I think they've shown that in you know all kinds of different online tournaments. Unfortunately, they didn't they didn't qualify for DreamHack. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna play them in the summit. So yep. I'm definitely looking forward to that.
Okay, so that that's actually exact question I wanted to ask. That going into the summit and going into next year, um, what team are you really going to be looking for? Is it Team Secret that that you really think is going to your, be your biggest contender for top team in the West? Uh, yeah, for the West, uh, as far as the Western team goes, Team Secret and Cloud9 are the, I think, the only teams that can match us. What about the East? About the East, I mean, it's so hard to say because we rarely seen them play. Right. We rarely see them face up against Western teams. Uh, but last time they were here. Uh, that was, what was that? We had ESL New ESL, York. Right, and yep. then we lost to Vici, and Vici eventually won right. the tournament. So Vici looked good, looked really good back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, ever since, we haven't really seen them play, so we right. don't know what they're doing. They probably know what we're doing. So <laughs> I think that's, like, the, the hardest yeah. part. We don't know anything about them, about their Dota. How, how much do you guys actually study? Like, uh, I've never actually asked in many of the Western teams. Like, obviously, in these tournaments, you get so focused on who you're going to be facing. But how often do you guys check in? Okay, what's going on in the Eastern scene? What's what's the, what's the being picked? Who's who's kind of the top dog right now? Like, how often do you guys check on those things? Not that much. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't do anything, any, any studying at all. Right. Uh, I leave that to Peter. Yeah, you've got a lot else on your plate with being in school and everything. So, uh, or I'm just lazy, but it's another <laughs> thing. But yeah, uh, I'm not sure how much Peter watches their Dota. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any ongoing Chinese tournaments right now. Right. So uh, it's usually it's like qualifiers for like Star Letter, yeah, for ESL and stuff like that. So it's kind of worrying that we don't see how they play. But I mean, it's kind of thrilling at the same time. It's fun yeah. to see what they bring to the table. All right, man. Well, I'll leave it here. Uh, do you want to give any shout outs to end the interview? Uh, I am obliged to shout out my sponsors. Uh huh. Uh, I actually don't know them by heart, so I'll just read off my shirt. Yeah, just look uh, at this shirt. You got I'll it I'll easy. I'll try some. Uh, you know, Monster. Shout out to Monster. Shout out mm-hmm. to Razor. CyberPower PC. Uh, shout out to BankQ. Shout out to HyperX. HyperX. 100 terabytes. Um, mm-hmm. Avery Media. Anything else? I don't think so. I think you got it pretty damn well. I think I think you nailed it. But um, okay, so the, the P- Peter oh, actually refused. Side too. All right. Okay, that's good. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that one. So P- Peter actually refused to do uh, sponsor shoutouts. Do you want to do some human yes. shoutouts now? Uh, human shoutouts? Uh, oh. Sure. Uh, I just met up with Haxman, an old hunt friend. Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah, I remember him. Uh, shout out to old hunt people, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, shout out to. Uh, Corey. Fair enough. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to have this interview. And uh, I'm Capitalist. This is I. We'll have more interviews coming up. YouTube.com forward slash join Dota Plus. We have all the interviews, a lot more coming up for DreamHack. So be sure to tune in.